Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and today we will learn about ultrasound probe positioning and scanning technique for epigastric hernias. On the left is a diagram showing the patient's abdomen and the ultrasound transducer placement. This dotted line is the costal margin. The xiphoid process of the sternum is at this point. This is the epigastric region. It's the area between the xiphoid process of the sternum and the umbilicus. Epigastric hernias occur in this region. This white box is the probe, and this red dot is the indicator or the orientation marker. This scan is done with the patient in a supine position mainly, but it can also be performed with the patient upright or in a semi-upright position if needed. The Valsalva maneuver is a breathing technique in which you try to exhale forcefully with your mouth closed and your nose pinched shut so that no air can escape. This increases the intra-abdominal pressure which can help in visualizing the hernia easily. It provokes herniation. Lifting the patient's head or legs will contract the rectus muscles which will make visualization easier. For this scan, a linear probe is selected with a frequency range between 7 and 15 MHz. This is ideal for visualizing abdominal wall defects. However, in obese patients, you can use a curvilinear probe with a frequency range between 2 and 5 MHz for deeper visualization. Now we will look at probe positioning. We need to scan the epigastric region and look for abdominal wall defects here. So we first place the probe in a transverse orientation in the epigastric region. The indicator is directed towards the patient's right side. This will be the image formed. This is a transverse image. The top layer is the skin and the layer below the skin is the subcutaneous fat. The central hyperechoic band is the linea alba. It's a fibrous midline structure. It's seen between both the rectus abdominis muscles in transverse plane. These two muscles are the rectus abdominis muscles. And below these muscles or posterior to these muscles is the preperitoneal fat and the peritoneum. So these are the structures we will find in this plane, in the epigastric region. Sweep the probe craniocaudally from the xiphoid process all the way down to the umbilicus, looking for any defects or any distortion of the normal abdominal structures. Ask the patient to apply Valsalva maneuver to provoke herniation of abdominal contents and locate the defect. In epigastric hernias, the most common contents are fat. It's mainly the preperitoneal fat that gets herniated. Bowel loops or omental fat are rarely present in this hernia. Epigastric hernias can be small especially when they contain only preperitoneal fat and may only appear during a Valsalva maneuver or in a certain position such as in an upright or sitting position. To scan this region in a longitudinal plane, rotate the probe 90 degrees clockwise from the transverse orientation in the midline to direct the indicator towards the patient's head and you will get this image. This hyperechoic band is the linea alba in longitudinal plane below the subcutaneous fat. This hypoechoic layer below the linea alba is the preperitoneal fat. Usually this fat gets herniated. And this hyperechoic line posterior to the fat layer is the peritoneum. Behind the peritoneum is the left lobe of the liver. This image is formed when the probe is moved downwards towards the umbilicus. This shadowing is due to the umbilicus. In this normal image, we don't see any defects in the abdominal wall. Now we will look at one case of an epigastric hernia to help you understand how this hernia appears on ultrasound. This image is in the transverse plane in the midline the epigastrium. There is a midline defect in the linea alba. 
the linea alba is disrupted. These are the rectus abdominis muscles. You can see herniated fat protruding through this defect. This is not seen in a normal image. You can see a measurable gap between the rectus muscles. You can take this measurement. This type of hernia may only appear during a valsalva maneuver or in a certain position. The most common contents in the hernia sac are preperitoneal fat, such as in this case. The omentum may also be involved, but it is less likely. The omentum appears more echogenic and more organized than preperitoneal fat. You can calculate the defect size, evaluate the hernia contents, and can even apply gentle pressure to check if the hernia is reducible. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos.